Hey everybody, as we near the end of the 2019 fantasy football season and move forward into the 2020 fantasy football season, I wanted to put a video together for keeper leagues and dynasty leagues, players to target whether via waivers right now uh, before the season ends or via trade. And I've always played in a deep, deep keeper league. And uh, I always reserve uh, at the end of the season a little bit of roster space to try to project, project off-season moves going forward, and it's something that I've always been pretty good at doing. So I wanted to put together a little bit of a video now, and I'm going to count down my top 10 favorite uh, targets for the running back position for the 2020 season. And these could be waiver targets. These could be trade targets that I think uh, you know guys are going to really pop next year. People that you can buy low and sell high on in the future season. Uh, now, before I get moving, you'll notice a, a logo on the bottom of the screen uh, for a company called Fantasy Go. I want to be clear about this. They are not a sponsor, okay? I actually know these guys. I met them at a conference, and I wanted to put this out there. If you missed the playoffs... Um, or even if you're still, your season is still active or we're in the off season and you're still uh, kind of going strong here, check out Fantasy Go. Go to FantasyGo.com. And the way I liken it to, it's almost like a fantasy butler, but uh, they have a really cool app. It's all app generated. Once again, go to FantasyGo.com. You can get everything there. And you can get a direct pipeline into some of the industries like best fantasy football players. I mean, you could talk to, you know, screw me, right? Screw, screw what I do. But um, you can talk to people from like fantasy footballers, um, any, of these, any of these tools. I mean, they're just to have an industry professionals in there that are really good at what they do. They do a lot of daily fantasy. They do a lot of fantasy football lineups. Um, you can try them out for free for the rest of the season. So again, go to fantasygo.com. I'm a big believer in it. I'm a user of it because, hey, it's always good to get a, a, a popular opinion and you can do a lot of cool stuff. And like I said, that, that chat feature, that concierge service that they have, it's awesome. So check that out. But um, you know, with no further ado, let's talk about uh, you know my top 10, once again, targets as of, what are we in, December of 2019? And I'll be updating this throughout the off season. But here's who I like going forward. Now, number 10 on my list, I'm going to go from 10 to 1. Number 10 on my list is Jarek McKinnon. Easy to forget about. He's been on the injured reserve now two straight years for San Francisco. And do I think he's going to be the San Francisco 49ers running back next year? I don't know. What I do know is Matt Breida is going to be a free agent. And I don't think, because their their backfield is so strong, I don't think that he's going to be back. I think he'll be able to get more money elsewhere and maybe even more opportunity elsewhere. So I suspect that Matt Breida will be gone. Um, you know, we see what's going on with Raheem Mostert. We see what's going on with Tevin Coleman. Jarek McKinnon was originally signed to be the running back. Now, I actually think that Jarek McKinnon could get waived this offseason. And if he's gone, he's going to be one of the better running backs on the market, um, along with Matt Breida. So he's a good guy to pick up, in my uh, in my opinion. He was really good in Minnesota uh, before he came to San Francisco. And I think he can be good again. Number nine on my list Remember him, Damian Harris, Damian Harris of the New England Patriots. Remember the hype that he had before the season. And I was never a big believer on the hype. Um, I thought he actually was probably one of the most, if not the most talented running backs coming out of the NFL draft. But I never thought that he had a serious shot to supplant either um, Sony Michelle or James White in those roles. At best, I thought he might be able to outplay Brandon Bolden. Okay. Keep in mind what the Patriots do, right? We're looking at organization. This is a keeper. This is a dynasty league for you. What are the Patriots going to do? Are they going to keep James White on for another season? Are they um, going to keep Sony Michelle? Yes, they will. To me, I think Damian Harris will fill this uh, James White role, if not next year, the year after that. Now, maybe it's a little bit too soon on him, but if you're talking about waiver wire claims, I think he's a great guy to pick up because if the Patriots do end up cutting ties contractually uh, with James White after the season, he could be uh, in for a huge huge role next season. He has all the talent in the world. He can make it happen. He looked good to me in preseason when I saw him. Like I said, I never thought he was a serious threat to get meaningful snaps this year. But if we're talking keeper and dynasty, don't forget about this guy. He could be huge if uh, some of the uh, the depth chart uh, issues for him open up. And I think they might this offseason. Number eight on my list, Alexander Madison. I've been talking this guy up since the preseason. There's another guy in the preseason I've been talking up, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Alexander Madison, for me, I think is probably the best pure running back coming out of the uh, the 2019 draft along with Damian Williams. Those are my two favorite players when I watch tape. Now, the problem with Alexander Madison, obviously, is that he has Dalvin Cook in front of him. Is he going to take snaps away from Dalvin Cook? Heck no. I don't think so. Hell no, if you prefer. Uh, I don't think that he's going to do that. But here's what could happen. Dalvin Cook, we saw what happened um, you know, with his shoulder injury. If you're catching this you know, in the offseason uh, against Seattle, he had a shoulder injury. I thought he might be out for a while. Um, looks as of the recording of this video that he'll be okay. But Dalvin Cook has never finished a full season. Okay, He could get injured. He could have a, a nasty injury at the end of the year. We don't know. But 
here's what really could happen in my mind. Dalvin Cook is having such a great year, and he's so integral to what Minnesota is doing. He might hold out. And we saw with uh, Melvin Gordon and Austin Eckler, uh, you know, we saw Tony Pollard early in the season, what he was doing before Ezekiel Elliott signed. He could have some real value if Dalvin Cook is either injured or holds out. Um, you know, he's somebody that should be rostered in every dynasty and keeper league going into the season because it's better to have him and not need him than uh, need him and not have him, in my opinion. Number seven on my list. Benny Snell from Pittsburgh. We're seeing what he's doing at the end of the season. Here's the deal, though. James Conner is ahead of him in the depth chart. Does that concern me for his future value? Yeah, I don't think that he's going to outplay James Conner. However, James Conner has been banged up his two seasons as a starter. Um, now, another thing that is interesting is uh, Benny Snell, basically with limited experience, has supplanted uh, Jalen Samuels is uh, kind of that number two running back, and he's getting primary carries already. Now, could he uh, defeat uh, James Conner in the offseason? He absolutely could, and Pittsburgh will play the best player. They're not going to play the guy who's the incumbent starter. They will play the best player. Benny Snell could beat James Conner. At worst, I think um, this could be a, a committee situation next year. I like what Benny Snell's putting on tape. I like his ability running the ball. He should be rostered in every single dynasty and keeper league going into the offseason. Number six on my list. Raheem Mostert. Now, he's a guy that I think, I've been saying this for about a year and a half now, I think he is the most talented running back on San Francisco. I talked about Jarek McKinnon earlier. I don't think Jarek McKinnon has a path to uh, to start next season because I think Mostert and Coleman will be in his way. So I think McKinnon's value is more as a free agent if he gets waived. Mostert, in my opinion, should be the starting running back. He might have some things to work on in terms of pass blocking or something like that. You'd have to ask Kyle Shanahan. But when I watch him play, I think he is explosive every single play. Play. Um, I think he could very well take this starting job away from um, Coleman uh, cleanly before the end of the year. And like I said before, Matt Breida being a free agent certainly helps his value moving forward into the 2020 NFL season. Number six, on, I'm sorry, yeah, number five on my list I'm up to, David Johnson of the Arizona Cardinals. You see in parentheses I say trade. He it will be rostered at this point. David Johnson, I think you should make an offer for David Johnson as soon as the season ends if you're in a keeper league. Teams are likely to be so ticked off by how the season has gone with Cliff Kingsbury at uh, you know running the uh, offense and him being kind of phased out for Kenyon Drake and Chase Edmonds. I think um, it's only a matter of time before David Johnson is either traded or he's uh, released entirely. And I believe wholeheartedly that David Johnson will be reuniting with Bruce Arians in Tampa Bay, and I think it will be a potent combination. We see what's going on in Tampa Bay. They want uh, either Peyton Barber or, uh, or Ronald Jones to step forward, and neither one of them can do it. Um, I think David Johnson will be the starter there, if not in 2020, certainly in 2021. David Johnson has a huge contract. He's way too expensive um, for, a, for an offensive system that doesn't really cater to running backs, and then also too expensive for uh, what is looking like a third-string uh, running back at this point. And that's not a shot at David Johnson and his talent. It's just it's just how things are unfolding in Arizona. Let's be realistic about it. So if you have an opportunity to acquire David Johnson from a disgruntled owner, do it because he will not be a Cardinal for long. Mark my words. Number four on my list, I mentioned before another rookie running back that I liked in Damian Harris. I mentioned Alexander Madison. Now I'm going to mention Devin Singletary. He was by far my favorite um, you know, running back in terms of fantasy uh, potential coming into the NFL season. A lot of people were talking about Miles Sanders. I don't like the Philadelphia system for running backs because they they spread the carries out too much, although he looks to be taking control in the last part of the season. Um, Alexander Madison behind Dalvin Cook, that hurts. Uh, uh, Damian Harris behind... Um, um, you know, the stable running backs in the Patriots, that hurts. David Montgomery, minds you, I never liked him in the system. I played that game with Jordan Howard last year, and I lost. I was not going to do it again, and I think that worked out in my favor. Devin Singletary has not yet begun to scratch his potential as an NFL player. He's finally taken uh, the most meaningful snaps at the running back position away. They have not even, Buffalo has not even really utilized him uh, excessively out of the backfield, which I think is a strength of his. He's kind of a smaller player, but he is super dynamic. And I think that, you know, going into maybe the 2020 season, I think they're going to make him more of a focal point of the offense. Um, not to say that he can be Christian McCaffrey, but there's no reason that he can't be like a Christian McCaffrey light. I think he can be a top 10 fantasy running back next year. He's going to be somewhat expensive based on how he's tracking at the end of the season. But I think you should buy now because he's only going to get more and more uh, valuable as we move forward. 
Number three on my list, somebody you can pick up off of waivers, Chase Edmonds. I mentioned everything about um, uh, David Johnson. I believe Chase Edmonds will be the starter. If you're worried about Kenyon Drake, he is a free agent in the offseason. I do not believe that Arizona will resign him. I do believe that Chase Edmonds will be back in the primary ball carrier for Arizona. Now, uh, the offensive system, you know, you're looking at maybe 10 to 15 carries a game and then some catches out of the backfield. If you're in a PPR league, he is a lot more uh, valuable in my opinion. Uh, but Chase Edmonds, you know, I think it's very reasonable that he could average five yards a carry on limited carries, have a very nice yardage year, and get into the end zone. And we've seen him prove it on the field this season. You can get him off of waivers right now. He's owned in only about 12% of leagues. Pick him up. For crying out loud, pick him up. Another waiver wire grab for you. Number two on my list, Darius Geis only owned in 50 percent of the leagues right now for some reason. Washington, they will have a new head coach, but we, what we've seen from Darius Geis, uh, he's going to be in his third year on a rookie deal. Adrian Peterson's a free agent. Is he going to be brought back into a new offensive system, uh, which will be you know coming into Washington? I don't know if Adrian Peterson will be brought back. He's kind of a power back. Maybe if Washington runs a power game, they bring him back. Most likely, though, Darius Geis will be the primary ball handler, and he can play and pass, uh, get, you know, be a factor in the passing game as well. I like Darius Geis. He needs to be rostered in every league, especially keepers and dynasties. Brings me to my last target, a guy I loved coming into the season, but he never really got it going because Detroit's offense sputtered at the beginning of the season. Do not forget about Carrion Johnson. He will be rostered in most leagues, but you know if uh, if your league does not have an injury uh, an injured reserve slot, he's probably available in free agency. Pick him up. What does it hurt to have him um, stashed away in your roster for the last couple of weeks? Drop that backup kicker and backup tight end. Pick up Carrion. Johnson. Look forward to 2020. Um, you know, it's possible that Matt Patricia could get let go, uh, but this Detroit offense is doing pretty well. I mean, if even if Patricia gets let go as a head coach, there's very um, it's very possible that Darren Bevel either A, uh, interviews and gets the head coaching job, or B is maintained, and maybe they go for another defensive coach, and you know maybe he's maintained. Either way, Kerryon Johnson to me is the most dynamic back on the roster. He's a factor in the passing and the running game. I thought he should have been a top ten running back this year, and if he had played the full season, maybe he could have gotten there. Uh, but I like him. Uh, he's just going to cost a little bit on trade. But I think a lot of owners, especially if Detroit makes a coaching change in the off season, which I think that they might. Um, and even if they don't, I like him in the Bevel system. I think in this offseason, maybe around March, April, um, you know, maybe you want to wait to see what happens in the draft, but I think Carrion Johnson could be had on the cheap, and I think he'll pay dividends next season. So there you go. There's my top 10 list. Uh, if you di agree, disagree, if you think somebody should be on the list, please comment. Let's talk about it. Also, once again, check out Fantasy Go. I'm a big believer in these guys. FantasyGo.com. Um, free, I believe, definitely for one week. They might even be free uh, You know, to finish out the season. Lots of daily fantasy stuff. Lots of fantasy football stuff. Just check them out. It's freaking cool. And then, um, once again, they're not a sponsor either. I just believe in the product. They're not paying me to say this. I actually believe it. And that's uh, that's I think that's a bigger deal than uh, for me just to read off an ad, right? So there you go. That takes me through the video. Once again, like, subscribe to the channel. We appreciate it. And uh, we'll catch you on another, another episode. We'll probably do all the position groupings. So uh, be sure to check back soon. Thanks, everyone.